do, but I am not going to necessarily burden you with two sermons, but I'm going to fold two into one. And I'm going to ask that you pray with me for just a moment before I go into the word. Lord knows I like to laugh. Laughter is good medicine. And uh, I don't believe that the Lord ever expected for us to be so staunch in our Christian life that nobody wants to be around us because we're so stiff-necked. But I believe that even Jesus laughed when he saw the little children and had a smile on his face. So, again, forgive me if that's not the style that you were looking for, if that's not what you were expecting, but I'm going to do what God gave me and what God told me to do. So, we're going to preach a little while, we're going to laugh a little while, but I'm going to bring the word that God says. So, I ask that you pray with me, most gracious and precious Heavenly Father. We come before you today, Lord, thanking you for just another day. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for those that have assembled here and even those that are out on the Internet listening this morning, Lord. We ask that you anoint their ears that they might hear your word, O oh, Heavenly Father. I'm asking that you decrease me. Take me out of the equation, Lord, and just increase yourself. Increase your word, O oh, Heavenly Father. Be a blessing to them that they may be a blessing to someone else, Lord. We just ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you because you are our Lord and our Redeemer. Lord, we ask that you use me today. Let me be the vessel that you created to pour out to these, your people. In the mighty, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I and the saints of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Hmm. Wow. Pour me out. Make me a vessel. Make me a pot. That's what we're going to talk about today. If you would, join me as we go into the word found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18. Uh, today I'm, I'm reading from the NIV, but those of you that have a different version, follow along. The message is still going to be the message. But Jeremiah 18... Y'all can hear me wave your hand. This is black. Can you hear me back there? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jeremiah 18, starting right at the very first verse. The word of the Lord says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter. So are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom is to be built up, That was a lie. He's trying to move my iPad to not finish his word. And if the nation that I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Hmm. With that today, Lord, I'm going to share with you the word. Note the other word. Molded by the pot. How many of us are willing to be and realize that we have been molded by the pot? Who is the pot? In today's scripture, God told Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house to receive a word there. And as Jeremiah watched the potter work and mold the clay, he noticed that when the potter realized that the clay did not go 
the way that he wanted it to go, or it had a defect, the craftsman would rework the clay into a new pot. God revealed to Jeremiah that this process was exactly how God's relationship is with his chosen people. As Judah's creator, God had the right to mold or shape the people according to his purpose and his plan. If they repented and turned from the sinful ways, he would rework the nation into a usable vessel. Otherwise, they would be worthless. So just for a little while, let's talk about being molded by the pot. You know, as I read this scripture, I was reminded again of my wife. <laughs> she didn't know that I put her in my sermon. I'll probably pay for that later. <laughs> but you know, those of you that know my wife, my wife is a crafter at heart. But she's also a perfectionist. And it, when, when it comes to things that she makes, um, back when we first met, my wife used to crochet a lot. She jumped from one craft to another. She just got talent. Like, I, I could never do it. Um, but she used to crochet, and I'm not talking about these big, thick grandma blankets, but she used to crochet these doilies, and the yarn was like thread. And as she would work, she would diligently work, and she would create her own patterns. So she wouldn't follow the standard pattern, but she'd make her own patterns. And as she would work, she would count the stitches. She'd mark on a little piece of paper how many stitches she did, when she was supposed to change it. I was totally confused about how she would do what she would do, but as she would work that yarn, every now and then she would stop and she'd take a look at it. And then sometimes I'd watch and she would look at it, and then she'd start pulling it apart. I'm like, what are you doing? She says, well, there's a flaw, because I missed a stitch here. Where I, and I'm like, I, 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 I didn't even see it. And you can't even notice it unless you were looking for it. She said, yeah, but I know it's there. Mm. And she was willing to take apart half of what she did to get it right, to mold it into what she envisioned it to be. Mm -hmm. right. And it, you know, it just, it amazed me that she would backtrack to correct a flaw in what she was creating. And I, I, I recall this one set of doilies that she made that somebody wanted. She was making a, a set. So it was two little ones and a big one. And, and then they started asking, well, how much for the set? And you know, my wife is not the one that's business savvy. That when, that's when it comes to me about how much we're going to charge for this. <laughs> you know, my wife is talking about, well, you know, all the yarn cost me about $12. And then I guess about $10 for my work. I'm like, wait a minute, baby. You put 40 hours of work into making this door, and you're going to charge $10 for your work, for your craftsmanship. And that's when it struck me, the value of the material is not what makes it valuable. The value is in the hands of the craft. Our value is not in what we are or what we do, uh -huh. what we think, or what we say. Uh -huh. Just like the pot is worth more than the cost of the clay, the doily is worth more than the yarn because of the craftsman. You are worth more than you are, or that you appear to be, because you are molded by the pot. Uh -huh. God has molded you uh -huh. for a purpose. Uh -huh. But the other side of the picture is that the yarn never told my wife to make it into a doily. Come on, man. The clay didn't tell the potter, right. make me into a vase, make me into an ashtray. Uh -huh. okay. We don't have the right to tell God what, when, or how to mold us. Amen. We have to be subject to and obedient to God as he has commanded us in his word. Uh -huh. You know, in, in life we go through some things and Sometimes uh, we get bruised, we get scuffed up, we get scarred, and maybe even broken. Anybody been broken up, scuffed up and scarred through life as we continue to live? It's almost a guarantee that somebody's going to hurt you. Even the little kids have gotten scuffed up. I still got marks and scars. I got a big burn on my arm because I wasn't being obedient. I wasn't listening to my mother. She told me it was hot. You know, I, I sidebar. 
You ever think about how we learn hot? As a child, what did our parents do? Every time we got near the stove, every time we got near the iron, what did they say? Hot. Right? Hot didn't mean a thing to us until guess what? One time we touched that. Oh, that's what hot is. Through our experiences is when we get refined. The potter makes the pot. But the pot's not done until he does what? He fires it. He puts it through something and then makes it refined. So then it's fine pot. We've got to be molded and fired. But first of all, we've got to be molded. And the potter doesn't fire the pot until it's molded the way that he wants it to be. Then he puts it in the fire. Whew, that wasn't even in my manuscript, but that's where the Holy Spirit works. Wait, let me talk about firing that pot for a minute. So, like I said, we may have, we may have been broken, we may have been shattered, we may have been scarred, but the wonderful thing is we have to realize, unlike the broken clay pot, or maybe the frayed yarn from the doily, after it's been through some things, we can be restored. When we are in the family of God, we have the right to return to the potter's wheel and ask, us, ask him to mold us again. Some of us may have fallen out of his path and done some of the most foul and deceitful things. But you know what God said in his word? He's the creator of all things. Yeah. I made you. Right. God, don't make no jump. God sits down at the potter's wheel and he doesn't make a mistake. But that is the wonderful difference when we come to the realization that we are molded by the potter. Mm. We can come back to the wheel mm. and receive a new life. Yeah. If you're only looking at materialistic things, when that thread gets, thread gets frayed or when the pot gets cracked, what do we do? We toss it out and we go get a new one. God in his infinite wisdom says, I don't need a new one. I made this one the way that I wanted the first time. Wow. So guess what? Uh -huh. okay. Every now and then, we got to go back to the potter's wheel yeah, yeah, yeah. and say, Lord, make me over. Yeah, yeah. Lord, fix me. Yeah, yeah. I'm going back to right. Come on, right. the potter's wheel. All right. All right. Because God, I want you to mold me. I yeah. want you to make me. Yeah. Yeah. Even after I've been fired, you have the ability to, to make me over again. Wow. King David, uh, old King David, who had the favor of God when he fought, he went on to do some treacherous things. He was a liar, an adulterer, yeah. a murderer to cover up his sin. Yet when he was confronted with his sins and his brokenness, he knew to go back and be remolded by the pocket. Psalm 139 says, for you created me, created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. He knew that no matter how bad he messed up, and he did, God had made him for wonderful things. Our God is a merciful God, and he, 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 just like an earthly father, he wants the best for his children. You know, even here on earth, you know, we hear about the prodigal son, and we, we, we see examples of it all the time, and as much as we do all that we do, those of us that are parents, for our children, we want the best for them, but sometimes they still do what they want to do. <laughs> Brother Kirkwood, you probably told your sons exactly what they needed to do, and they walk right out the door and do just the opposite. But oh, after a while, when they've messed up, when they've done what Daddy told them not to do, they come back with their head down, tail between their legs. And what does a loving father do? Takes them back and says, that's all right. We'll get it right tomorrow. I still love you. 
but I'm going to beat you right now. <laughs> Yeah, I got a lot of love for my daddy because you know what? There was a whole lot of times that I wasn't acting like I was molded. But the wonderful thing is our merciful God has grace. He has patience. He has love. And there's one thing that he requires, and that's a repentant heart. You see, you can't earn God's blessings or salvation. Because it's a gift. Yes. You can't earn a gift. And a gift is freely given to those who accept his son as their savior. Uh -huh. Romans 9.20 says, but who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Yeah. Uh -huh. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Uh -huh. Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay yeah. some pottery for a special purpose that's and good. some common use? Yeah, that's good. Who are you? Who are you, Who are you uh -huh. to tell God what to do with right. what He created? Yeah. But don't we do it? Uh -huh. We do it all the time. That's good. Lord, I ain't doing that. Right. You know, and sometimes we ask God to do things that we feel. Uh, sometimes God asks us to do things that we feel we're not ready for, or that are completely impossible based on our knowledge, skills, and abilities. But know this, God can do whatever he wants, with whatever he wants, because he created it. Yeah, man. When his son Jesus was here on earth, uh -huh. Jesus, he finished preaching one day, and, he, and <laughs> this is crazy, he, he realized that the people needed to eat, because they've been here all day, y'all been to church all day. Y'all hungry. What did the disciples say? Tell them to go get some meat. Yeah. We'll be here. That's what he said. Man, you can imagine Pastor Covington got y'all locked up all day. Uh -huh. And he said, all right, well, we're going we to stop service for about a half hour. Y'all run down and get some meat. And then y'all be back at 3 o'clock. Man, y'all walk away talking about, man, that man, he's crazy. He's standing at 3 o'clock if he wants to. But Jesus told the disciples, you feed him. And what did the disciples turn around and say? Well, but the but Jesus, that would take a year's wages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, the disciples, even as tight as they were with Jesus, these is his boys. Like, bro, we ain't got that kind of money. Yeah. We're talking about 5,000 men plus women and children. Right. What does Jesus say to them? Well, go look in the crowd. See what you can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did they come back with? A little boy's lunch. Yeah. It came back with a little brown greasy bag. Yeah, yeah. With a couple of fish and some barley loaf. Come yeah. on, Ryan. Well, first of all, what we, 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 we've heard this story a million times and we hear about the miracle. Uh -huh. But the first miracle wasn't what God did multiplying it. The first miracle was that the little boy gave up his lunch. Yeah, the first little, <laughs> look, my mama packed me a lunch. I'm sorry that y'all didn't get one. All right. But I got me a couple of fish and some bread. Yeah. And what do you mean Jesus needs this to feed all these people? The first miracle was that he was willing to give up what he had. Yeah. He trusted Jesus enough, uh -huh. not even knowing the outcome. But I'm going to give up what I got and let Jesus make it what it is. Yeah. And y'all know what happened. Yeah. They came back with that little greasy bag. Yeah, I don't know whether the disciples really believed or not, but guess what? What was the first thing that Jesus did when he got it? He prayed to the Father. Yeah. Make it into what you want it to be. And then he started feeding people. Yeah. So y'all, no, just come on, sit them down. Brother, come and sit. Get them in groups and just start feeding them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure this jacked up a whole lot of people because... Not only did he feed the 5,000 men, but he fed all the women and the children. And then there was the leftovers. There were 12 baskets of leftovers. If God can take a greasy bag of a little boy's lunch and take care of all of these folks and have more left over than he started with, can he do with you? What right do you have to tell God that he can't do that? Or he shouldn't do that? 
Lord, I can't testify. What do you mean you can't testify? Sure you can. You just haven't gotten to the point where you realize how much God has done for you. Stop patting yourself on the back and realize that, you know what, if I hadn't done it, if God hadn't done it, I couldn't have done it. Because it's not me. I've got to realize that I was molded by the Lord. He took me and shaped me. He took me through those experiences. He took me over here and did this to me so that I could be ready when it got over here. He prepared me for battles that I didn't even know I was going to have to fight. Come on, sir. Right. I can't witness to nobody. They might ask me a question that I don't know. But you know what? If you willingly open your mouth, he will fill it with his words. He'll give you the right words to say. Because guess what? Sometimes the words that you think are going to convince somebody are the very ones that have them walking away talking about, see, that's old Jesus free. I ain't listening to them. But if we stop and let yourself be molded by the potter, he will give you the words to say. There have been times that I've had conversation and people say to me, oh, man, that thing that you said to me. And I'm like, I don't even know what I said. What I say, what I do, because... Oh, it was so impactful. Got the all barbecue recipe or something. I don't even remember what it was. But guess what? That's how God does. He can use whatever he created for whatever he wants. For however he wants to do it. Yeah. That's good. He did it on Pentecost. Had him speaking in languages that they didn't even know. But it wasn't for them, it was for the people that hear. So guess what? Every day, we have to crave to be molded by the pot. Sometimes we get frays in our yarn or chips in our pot. We might be raggedy. We might be a crack head, we might be a crack pot. But guess what? When we are molded by God, those things that we don't do that are pleasing to God. Or things that we do that are not pleasing to God. Also known as sin. Has anybody in, has anybody in here ever sinned? Yeah. 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 I'm going to put both hands on this. I'm just, I'm just trying to confirm. We mess up. Yeah. We fall from grace. Uh-huh. We do things that are not pleasing to God. And if we were just the material of our makeup, the maker would just throw us away. Toss the society. Well, let me get another one. Try it again. And that's the lie that Satan wants you to believe. Satan wants you to think, oh, you're broken. You messed up. Now you're worthless. God can't use you no more because you did this. Or you did that. Or you said this. Or when you had a chance, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So you have no choice but to be tossed in the train. You might as well keep on traveling down that dark path because you're already a sinner. You don't smoke before, so you know you you messed up now. You might as well just keep on doing it. But I'm here to tell you, in case you didn't know, the devil is a liar and the truth ain't in him. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made by the Father. Jesus said that I have come to bring you life and life more abundant. But you know, there's there's plenty of examples in the Bible that we can look and and see that same scenario. You know, I I think about Jonah. (laughs) Jonah had been given his marching orders and been told what to do. But old Jonah was disobedient to God and ended up going fishing from the inside out. (laughs) I love to fish, but not from the belly of a fish. But even in his wrongness and his disobedience, what did he do? He turned back to God. And God turned it all around. He went back to be molded by the pot in the belly of the fish. Peter, (laughs) Peter was Jesus' boy. Peter just, he loved the Lord. 
He really did. He just, he was always there. He walked out on the water because he believed in Jesus. And then what did Peter say? That I'll never deny you. <laughs> Jesus told him they were going to. But Peter said, nah, I'll never do it. Yeah. And what did he do? Not once. <laughs> Not twice. Three times. But what do we in our earthly self say? Three strikes, you out. We'll call baseball rules all day, every day on everybody that comes across our lives. No. But guess what? Jesus still knew how much Peter loved him. Jesus gave him an opportunity to repent and be remolded. And then there's my boy Saul. Saul of Tarsus. He was bad. Saul was just toe up from the flow up. If you was a Christian, you might not have a head. Because Saul was just that ruthless. He's like, oh, you, you what? You serve the Lord. <laughs> Next. And he was absolutely thinking that he was right in what he was doing. But one day on the Damascus Road, yeah, yeah, yeah. one day on the Damascus Road, yeah, yeah. as mean and nasty as Saul was, he had a reputation and everybody knew about it. The potter said, hold on. It's time for me to pray, bring you back to the potter's bench. He took his eyesight and said, it's time for me to make you over. Yeah. Even Saul, as mean and nasty as he was, allowed himself to be remolded by the potter. Yeah. Job, even though Job never denied God, did he not suffer great loss? Till the flesh fell off of his bones. But through his faithfulness, he was restored. He held on to the God. He held on to the fact that he was molded by the pot. So even though he was bruised and he was scarred, Job understood that God was preparing me for something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to trust him. Job's wife told him to curse God and die. Sometimes even the people that are closest to you don't understand what God is doing in your life. But you have to stand strong and realize that you're still being molded by the body. If you feel like right now you're, you're not smart enough, or you're not strong enough, or you're not pretty enough, or you're not wealthy enough, or you're not thin enough, or you're not big enough, or any other inadequacies that, inadequacies that, that, that the world might so quickly label you with, know that you're enough doesn't come from your own being. <laughs> Realize that you are just the clay. You've been molded by the potter. And do not hesitate to remind yourself of the word of God, which is found in Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. See, sometimes we just have to encourage ourselves with God's word. It's there. But we've got to have it in our heart. Having it in the Bible sitting on our nightstand or in the dining room table or in the, in the kitchen or the living room. Some folks got that Bible sitting out. But the word is not going to just bounce out and emanate and bless your house because, oh, I got a Bible open. Take those words. Pour them into you. Let the potter mold you yeah. into who he wants you to be. Yeah, yeah. Who he created you to be. Yeah. You see, when you are molded by the pot, the world can't put limitations on where you can go or what you can do. Uh -huh. But church, in order to be molded by the potter, you do have to take a few steps. Yeah. The Bible says that you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth yeah. that Jesus Christ is the true and living Son of God. But once you make that confession, you also must ask the Holy Spirit to come live inside your heart. Wow. 
It's that Holy Spirit that leads and guides us in our daily lives. Helps us to grow closer to God. As you grow closer to God, you will grow in your desire to please Him by doing His will. If you, you don't know what God's will is for your life, study His Word. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you to be what the Master has created you to be. Make me into what the pot has molded me to be. I may not see it today. I may not know it tomorrow. He may not see it. He may not see it. You might not see it. Even when you look in the mirror. But continuously tell yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am molded by the master pot. He knows what he was doing. He knitted me together in my mother's womb. Before any of these people that are judging me today even knew who I was or what I was. Yeah. Yeah. God knew what I was going to be. So if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or perhaps you have and you've gone astray, I'm going to ask that you just join me in a word of prayer right now. Ask God to get your life on the right track. Because many of us have started on the journey and gotten detracted and got turned off on a detour. Yes. We put our foot on a rock and we slipped off. We've accepted that slip and said, oh, well, I messed up. I guess I'm going to have to keep on going down this wrong road. But we don't have to do that. Today I'm here to tell you, we serve a God of second chances. We were molded by a potter who will put us back on the potter's wheel. And he'll make us in. He'll mold us again. The potter wants to put us back together again. So just bow your heads right where you are. Join me in this word of prayer. Dear God, I know that I've done wrong and not always been obedient to your word. Today I confess that I need you in my life. I know that Jesus is your son and was sent for my salvation. I ask that your Holy Spirit come into me today and dwell with me forever. Lead and guide me all the days of my life and let me be pleasing to you and you alone. You are the potter and I am the clay. I want to continue to be molded by the potter. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer and you had never given yourself to Jesus Christ, find yourself a Bible-believing church. And when you get there, tell the pastor that I've given my life to Christ. I accept Jesus Christ into my life and I want to grow. I want to learn. And I say a Bible-believing church because a Bible-believing church is going to teach you the word. Not just tell you to go read the word. But I'm going to close with God's word found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, that says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word for you today, Lord. This is the word for you today, you. This is the word for you that might be listening or watching on online. May God continue to bless you. May he continue to build you up and encourage you. And I pray that every day you remember that you are bold.
Church, it's now time for communion. Uh, as always, this is the time that we commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so if you have grape juice and if you have some crackers, uh, uh, we can pull them out um, if you want to join in. If not, just sit there and uh, have your mind on Jesus. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. Um, and, uh, and as I'm reading, I'm going to pause and then we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to eat the bread and drink the cup. And so Luke chapter 22, verse 14 says, And when the hour came, he reclined at the table, meaning Jesus, him and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is, bro which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Thank you, Jesus. And likewise, the cup, after, that, after they had eaten, saying, This is the cup that is poured out for you. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Let us drink together. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks for what God has done for us. And through him, we have grace. Through him, we have forgiveness. And through him, we have salvation. And we are justified uh, through Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you, church. I want to thank you for listening to the word. We're praying that the word of God edified you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your savior, uh, we want to invite you. We want to invite you to know Christ as your savior. A couple of things that we need to do here is simple is that uh, you need, we need to confess our sins. Uh, uh, confess and say, Lord, I have sin in my life and I need that sin removed. And the only way that that sin can be removed is when we confess that Jesus is Lord, that he died for our sins and he was resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So you simply just need to say, Lord, I have sins. Forgive me for those sins. I receive you as Savior, and I believe by faith that you are Lord and that you are the Lord of my life and you have redeemed me from my sins. And just like that, you have salvation. Just like that, you know the Lord for yourself. Uh, one thing that we've learned, uh, and, and we know at Union here at our church, uh, uh, we would uh, uh, we would love for you to be a part of our church. But at the same time, um, if you wish to go to another church or you want uh, uh, know someone else, that's fine too. But one thing is certain, and, and, uh, you don't have to be here to be saved. Uh, you know the Lord for yourself. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, I would uh, advise you to go to our email. Uh, our email is unionbaptist.southriverenj at gmail.com. That's unionbaptist.southriverenj at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or if you just, uh, uh, even during this pandemic, you want to reach out and say, I want to be a part of this great church, you can do that as well. And we will contact, be in contact with you, and uh, we'll give you information on how to join the church and whatnot. Amen. I pray all is well with you. Uh, grace and peace.